Hi, I am 22 years old and I am a senior in college. <laughs> I am a victim of sexual assault. Actually, not a victim. I'm going to say I'm a survivor and a fighter. Um, because uh, that's, that's what I've been doing. This time last year, I was at a point in my life where everything was going really fantastically. I was in a relationship with a man who I loved with my entire heart, and that relationship had eventually run its course, and I had my heart broken. It, I was assaulted by a different um, student on campus, and that happened about a month after my relationship had ended. Right after the assault, um, I didn't even know what to call it. I wasn't sure what to do. I was talking to one of my friends who had um, gotten me out of the situation and and none of us knew, knew what had, had really happened or what was the appropriate thing to do in this situation. Thankfully, someone, um, an adult in my life, told me that I did need to report this. It's really funny, you know, uh, I, I was 21 at the time and you think you're an adult until like you need to reach out for other adults for help, but then you realize like, are you ever really an adult? Because then those adults like didn't even know how to help me either. Everyone just kept passing me on from person to person. I started by going to the police department, but I was afraid to have my name put out there because I was afraid of judgment or that people wouldn't understand or not believe or that people would turn my story around and say negative things about me. I wasn't quite ready to fill out a police report yet, so they passed me on to um, our university's counseling center. The counselor that I was with uh, isn't a licensed professional. She is um, an intern with the university counseling center and she essentially handed me a packet of different options of what I could do. When trauma just happens, you don't, you don't really know the what to do. No one was telling me and giving me the permission to say that I was assaulted. All I know is that this horrible thing happened, but everyone was too afraid to say the word sexual assault. So eventually I decided to go to the school and uh, fill out the Title IX report. And the woman I was with uh, appeared to be listening, um, seemed like she would be on my side, and took down all of the notes and listened to my story and wrote down everything. And they didn't do anything on my case for about a month. So I had to come onto campus every day being scared, um, not knowing if I was going to see the person that assaulted me. And so I had to seclude myself because no one was protecting me or really listening to what I had to say. The Title IX committee didn't start anything on my case until finals week, which is complicated because how are you going to interview people and do anything about what had happened when nobody's on campus. This extended throughout the summer. I kept having to come back onto campus and tell my story over and over and over again. They added another investigator into my case halfway through. Before then, um, the Title IX committee on campus consisted of people who worked in human resources who really don't have appropriate training on sexual assault or awareness of this very sensitive subject matter. So this person was brought on, and so again, I had to start all the way over, retelling my story, and it's um, very triggering and traumatizing to have to relive the details of the assault over and over and over again. I also wasn't really talking to anybody about this. Um, I, after the initial um, uh, meeting I had with university counseling, I, I wasn't going to uh, subject myself to uh, talking to someone who really wasn't listening and wanting to relate the assault to other problems in my life because 
nothing I did caused that, but that's what I was being made to feel like happened. The Title IX process in my case lasted over 70 days. The Department of Education suggests that uh, Title IX investigations should not last over 60, and that's in complicated cases. And reading over the report that they sent me, they already had their mind made up from the beginning about if the act was consensual or not. Um, they said several times that I had very clearly gone through some kind of trauma and had memory lapses because of that, but they didn't say that the act was the cause of the trauma. They questioned my um, mental stability because of the breakup that I had had previously, when it truly had nothing to do with the assault or how I was, but that because I was emotional after the assault, it was probably due to how my heart was broken and not the fact that I had just lost a piece of myself. So after that, I confronted the committee and uh, told them everything wrong that they had done. But at that point, I was too exhausted to uh, file for an appeal. It had lasted too long. You know, at some point, you have to start taking care of yourself. And I hadn't done that yet. I hadn't let myself stop thinking about what had happened and wondering if the investigators were going to call me that day or if I was going to get an outcome of the case that day. This had lasted for over three months and I was, I was exhausted. And so I had a meeting with them and for three women being on the, uh, the committee, they were the most unresponsive, disrespectful women I have ever encountered in my life. They didn't listen to a thing I had to say. They did say, however, that they would establish a mutual no contact order between um, my assailant and myself. And so I try and let things go. And I step onto campus for the first time um, for my senior year in August and Again, I, I had those feelings of just terror and anxiety, and I didn't want to be here, and that's not, that's not how you want to spend your senior year of college, you know? And I found out that they had neglected to establish the mutual no contact order. For two months, I was on campus without any sort of protection or safety. The only thing they did for me was check if I had classes with him, and I didn't. But it's this very small campus, and I ran into him twice. And it drove me to the point where I had to take a week off of classes because I was afraid. So I lost a week of my senior year of college going home and trying to figure myself out again. I've always called myself resilient, and at that time I wasn't finding that in myself. I ended up talking um, or trying to talk with the higher ups in the university, and I was denied meetings with um, the president of the university for the integrity of the case. There was no integrity <laughs> in the case, to be quite honest. I ended up meeting with essentially the lawyer for the university. and. I knew what I was getting into. I just needed my voice to be heard and for someone to understand that I was not treated correctly. So I told my story again. If there was enough that had gone wrong or steps that they did not follow, they would reopen the case and um, reevaluate the decision to keep that student on campus. It took another month, so we're looking into November at this point. It took them that long to tell me that they really didn't do anything wrong, and even though they didn't treat me right, and how a, a survivor 
should be treated in this situation, um, it was compliant. And I don't, I don't think that's right. But that's the answer they have for me. <laughs> they did say that they were making changes in the Title IX process and the ways that they're investigating. And they said in large part that was because of me and my case. Sexual assault has been happening since the beginning of time. And it's really hard to understand why in, at the time it was 2016, but even still now in 2017, how it's taken us this long to think that, you know, women's voices deserve to be heard. Not just women's, I mean, the men too. People's voices deserve to be heard. And especially in a place, you know, where this, this used to be my home and it's incredibly difficult to come to school every day and to have pride in my university. It's the program that I'm in that, that keeps me here and my friends. You know what I really loved was uh, Meryl Streep's speech when she quoted Carrie Fisher saying, uh, take your broken heart and make it into art. And I was like, hey, I've been doing that. So that's pretty cool. I really appreciated that. I really appreciate that I've had the chance to take a part of our discussion and share a little bit of my story. Don't ever let yourself just be compliant. Strive for more than that. You know, if, if you're a survivor, if you're a witness or someone that has some part of dealing with somebody else's story and somebody else's trauma, strive for justice and what's right. Put yourself in the shoes of someone who has had a piece of them taken away. Be right, not compliant.